everybody, and welcome to the RHAP BNB for episode two of Survivor 42. My name is Mike Bloom, back together for another really fun week of what so far has been a very fun season of Survivor. And we, of course, have assembled an incredible panel to crack into it like a nice hermit crab shell, no matter what the size may be. Uh, first, let me welcome the co owner of the BNB, someone that I am constantly leaning through the jungle every week, looking for wise, much like Mike and Daniel, Liana Boris. Liana, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. Thanks, Mike. This was a really enjoyable episode from Mike finding the idol to Mike losing the idol to Daniel telling Roxroy to protect his balls. Marianne, we got to learn so much more about the Orange Tribe. So really, all in all, I thought this was really enjoyable. I think that there's a lot to talk about. Is that your list of the things you enjoyed most about the episode in specific descending order? In, well, mm, yeah, I would say in order. I think the combination of Mike finding and losing the idol beats out the balls. But otherwise, you know, you could flip those two. But uh, yeah, I would say that that is exactly the pecking order. Oh, oh no, you know what? I want to add Marianne's specific phrase of don't send me to Zach. <laughs> <laughs> council that needs to be added to my list as well yeah the newest twist coming for survivor 44 is like the <laughs> island of zach where it's just zach hanging out there and you have to romance him it becomes bachelor in paradise within the right. show talk about a game within the game well we're bringing on somebody this week who is an expert on balls uh sports connoisseur himself someone who may coach uh his students as well whether or not he describes soccer as a sport or not remains to be seen but very happy to be welcoming back jordan kalish to the bnb jordan how are you yes thanks for having me as as you have just uh pointed out i i am somewhat of a ball monger uh so yeah i mean i don't know i don't know if i have wanted to say that but i did uh, and that's how we're starting this podcast I mean, listen, you keep giving yourself the nicknames. I think uh, <laughs> ballmongering Kalish might be something we can add to the list now. Yes, uh, we, we we finally have another uh, Lydia on Survivor. So I think I just have monger in my in my brain because of fishmonger Lydia. So <laughs> yeah. I like Jordan ballmonger Kalish, I think, as, as a nickname, Jordan which Ball. actually. So, Jordan, I'm happy that you're here. So, first yeah. of all, I am wearing my um, my oh. seeds baby hoodie. Nice. Uh, can, but, I, can I ask how much in the Boris Zamvakili household, like what percentage of your wardrobe is RHAP merchandise? Ooh, I don't want to answer that. <laughs> well, actually, <laughs> what, what percentage of seeds, baby network, merchandise? So. Okay, yeah. Well, okay. So I would say for me, it's less. For Puya, it's like the majority of his hoodies are all like either Puya merch or <laughs> RHAP merch, mm -hmm. something like that. So I'm going to go with like collectively maybe like 30% like total of our clothes, which if you think mm -hmm. about it is quite a bit. Uh, but anyway, so Jordan, so the story I have to tell you is my sister is growing sprouts like oh. in like a, like in a jar. Sprouts and she was babies. like, they're super cool. Okay. So they're super cool. And she was like, I'm going to send you your own so you can grow some. <laughs> and in the, when she sent me the seeds, the Amazon note like said seeds, baby. And then in the email she sent me, it said sprouts, baby. Oh my so, God. And my sister does not watch Survivor. I don't even think she listens, like she does not listen to this podcast, but it has permeated <laughs> into my family's lexicon. So, did so you, were you just wearing the sweatshirt around her or something? I maybe, or I don't know. I, can't I mean, I'm assuming 30% of the time you're, you're, you're going to well, be wearing yeah. it. So exactly. I, I'm it, very it happy. Is. I have played <laughs> such a role in, in, in your family life, Liana, yeah. where, where not only are you saying seeds, baby, not only is Puya saying seeds, baby, all of the Borises are seeds, babies. <laughs> right. Yeah. So when I harvest my sprouts today, I, I will eat them and think of, of you, Yay. Mr. Ballmonger. Hey, are they in the Tupperware? Do you put it in the fridge? <laughs> they're in a jar right now so not a, a shaking tupperware yet and they're you know they're soft so they're not gonna make you're the probably same not sound, supposed to shake them right i'll i'll put them i can put them on a bagel though so it's definitely doable you don't want to give them you like you want yeah. to though mm -hmm. yeah i, I think I you could can put sprouts it. in a bagel what about it like in 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 the schmear you put it in the cream cheese and then yeah, you have like a, a yeah, cream yeah. cheese sprout spread Sprouts and seeds. Mm, sprouts and seeds. <laughs> oh, I'm so high. We're probably making so many people hungry if they're taking on the Survivor 42 diet and like not eating anything before coming onto this podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, hi, well, unfortunately, the cream cheese is not vegan. So he I, could I have the sprouts. He could eat the sprouts. He could eat the sprouts. He could Without have the sprouts. Any sort we, could, 
we can have a vegan cream cheese that we that we sell like when when the three of us go into business together and and we start start selling yeah. bagels. I mean, it's and the B and B and B, Bloom and Boris and Ballmonger. That's the natural <laughs> trio going on right now. Yes. Uh, well, let's fabulous. let's try to wrangle ourselves, much like we might wrangle some balls and protect things as we talk about episode two of Survivor 42. Liana, you giving your thoughts about it. Jordan, I know you were uh, on with Rob last week, but like two episodes in to Survivor 42, a lot of positive consensus going around with the internet. Are you in agreement with them? Yeah, I I've, am. I think really like almost everyone I've, I've seen on social media really enjoying uh, the season so far. I mean, for, 41, I think had a lot of positive things about it. I really did like the cast of 41. Uh, and I think they've done a really good job again of getting a group of interesting people. There are, I mean, I didn't really want anyone to get voted out of this episode. Obviously somebody has to, and I, I am really happy based on what we've seen from Marianne so far. Uh, it, it wasn't her. And unfortunately that had to come, uh, you know, with the sacrifice of, uh, of Mariah going, but like, I was thinking about the other two tribes, like, I, I didn't want anyone to lose that challenge because I don't mm-hmm. want to lose any of these people. And I, and it just, but that's how that's, uh, that's survivor Susan. That's how the game works. Um, baseball reference for, uh, those, for, I would for, say, uh, I would say very, very, no, very, uh, very, uh, in, in the, in the weeds or in, in the seeds, uh, I, Yankee radio reference, uh, I mean, for, listen, for Michael J. Clark base- and nobody else. You've got baseball on the brain, right? It's coming back. Uh, we ought to say that survivor came. I know, I guess baseball did come back before survivor, right? Cause it did have a, a weird kind of season last the year, but I'm sure you're, this game, has been a good week for you. Yeah, the beauty of the game of baseball makes me want to want to cry. Uh, so yes, it is on my brain. <laughs> Spring training is starting. <laughs> Okay, good. Thanks for the update, uh, yeah. Jordan. Well, speaking speaking of phrases, so oh. fun phrases are back this week. And Jordan, you joined us last season to talk about the phrases and brought uh, brought a little game with you. So I think yes. we should introduce what we're doing today just to kind of kick kick that off. Yeah. So just much like Survivor uh, forty one and forty two, we're just we're just like rehashing all of the stuff uh, from last season, and, and we are going to be broken. playing. Don't fix it. You know I, ex- exactly. Exactly. And I don't even remember like what score system we use. So I, I might just make it up on the spot. But what I have done before the podcast is I have used a uh, random phrase generator and also potentially some that did not necessarily come from the random phrase generator, but it doesn't really matter what the origin of the phrases are. Uh, I sent four phrases to Mike that Liana does not know about. Mm-hmm. I mean, she knows I sent them, but she doesn't know what they are. And I sent four phrases to Liana. And at some point during this podcast, they have to work these phrases into the conversation. Once they say a phrase, their opponent has 10 seconds to call them out for using one of the phrases. If they get it past their opponent uh, without, uh, you know, after 10 seconds, uh, they will get two points. And if their opponent successfully calls them out, they will get the opponent will get one point for correctly recognizing the phrase. Okay. Uh, Sounds awesome. good. So if you hear us saying, I don't know if there is actually a limit to how weird we say things on this podcast normally, Mm -hmm. but if we do say particularly abnormal things Mm -hmm. is the job of both uh, each other to call each other out on that and something that you can play along with as well. So yeah, you know, we were sort of working this out. We figured, okay, there's a good chance given this being modern survivor, someone's going to find the idol in episode two. We benefited here from Mike, at least temporarily speaking, uh, due to him misplacing the idol. So yeah, it ended up working out really well that the phrases are being misplaced in there. I mean, let me also ask Jordan, before we get any further, your thoughts as a a, a sports fanatic on the phrase, you know, there is such beauty in the the game of soccer that it makes me cry or whatever I'm paraphrasing here. Well, I'll I'll start by saying this. Soccer is, is the most popular sport in the world. And and I will say that soccer is a sport. I don't, I don't think that's that's disputable. <laughs> but I, as I mean, look, I, I I'm I'm a fan of Mike, and I think I I can see what Mike's going for here. He's he's a, a a northeastern guy. I mean, soccer is actually popular on the northeast, but he's like a Hoboken guy. You could tell he probably watches football every week as I do. And you, you know, like as as a big football fan, I'll sometimes make fun of soccer. I don't like it as much as football. I don't particularly like watching soccer. 
but it's a good sport. I mean, you have to, you have to be uh, an incredible athlete to be an elite soccer player. I've, I, I did coach soccer one year uh, out of necessity because my school needed someone to coach the middle school boys soccer team. Never again. Uh, but <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it, it was not my favorite coaching experience, to be honest. Um, and part, Partly because of the sport, partly because it was like uh, a, a group of um, middle school boys who didn't like to listen. Uh, but it, it's not it's not my <laughs> not my favorite sport, but it's a, it is a, it is a sport. And is it beautiful? Everything is beautiful in its own way. That's that For is sure. And it's, and it's has it ever made me cry? Cool. Have has has soccer ever made me cry? I mean, I played soccer for one year in kindergarten, and it probably did make me cry because I I uh, quit after one year. So uh, I don't know if it was because of the beauty, but uh, it it was not not a sport that I stuck with. I just love the idea of Jordan defining his enjoyment of sports based on like how unruly and what age the students are that he. Coached. I mean, that's that's a big part of it. <laughs> okay. I mean, yeah, considering that, yeah. I mean, I would just love to see uh, almost like a Ted Lasso spinoff now of Jordan mm. Kalish managing. If they did like Ted Lasso Junior. and it was all the characters aged down a la Muppet Babies, and here's Jordan <laughs> Kalish like wrangling all these unruly hormonal boys. Hey, hey. <laughs> That Get was back here. so cute. Don't kick yeah, that like, ball over there. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah, little baby where I can't like, I oh, F off, Mr. Kalish. <laughs> <laughs> the accent. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, no, no, he, uh, he went to Australia in this <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. It's been on Australia. Ugh, little kid sports are so cute. Um, I, I think that this phrase is actually the most normal out of all of the phrases that we've seen so far. I think it's absolutely doable to work into yeah. uh uh, a phrase like in, in mad chat i i disagree like i think the broccoli small trees thing made sense maybe i'm I'm sort of colored by the context with which it was used in 41 right with like the oh i'm so hungry i'm seeing tr like the trees and mm -hmm. yes brad did screw it up but like i don't know i think maybe i'm also colored by the fact that mike of all people has to say it yes that that makes it more difficult right because i would also imagine with no offense to soccer fans, I'm not looking at Mike Turner and I'm like, oh yeah, that guy puts on his, you know, his um his his Liverpool jersey every Saturday and like checks out, you know, things going on in ESPN too. Yeah, absolutely not. So like, his, I his think scarf. Exactly. So like, I would imagine <laughs> that that seems a little more WTF for me. I agree that it it's still better than the butterfly, still better than the goat on Astro Trip. Though I do think. With with no offense to the you know our friends south of the Mason Dixon line, I do feel like people who are from there might be able to come across better with that catchphrase. Uh, I actually saw someone post in the Patreon group recently that they were watching Big Brother, and I think James Hewling actually said something close to that phrase. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe to your point, Liana, it's also about the objectivity of the phrase for me, and more about who can who can pass it. You know, mm -hmm. who can actually come across saying it and not have people raise eyebrows at it? Pass it like a soccer ball. <laughs> that's right yeah uh, mike is i'm actually just happy overall that mike has to say one of the funny phrases whether or not daniel will actually like get him to say it or not because he he's just a really fun character so far like his moment also with high where he they were you know this is high's whole like veganism segment or whatever and mike is like 24 days i'm gonna be eating real food burgers and he goes oh sorry he, like apologizes to high that he mentioned burgers it was just a really fun little character moment mm -hmm. and uh, it makes me want to see more of mike Hey, yeah. as as Aris once said, you're you're not out of the game uh, in, until you're eating a cheeseburger. But what Marianne said is that you're not out of the game until it's a, a Wharton burger. I would say <laughs> until you're eating something else. Ooh. So you're eating yeah, a little no, bit of eating a Wharton burger. It's a, you know, a little <laughs> Wharton burger. <laughs> Though it's a little lean, I would say, than meat in a Wharton burger. Yeah. <laughs> Hashtag skinny <laughs> <you> guys. <laughs> this this was such a fun episode. Like I will again say this cast is so odd and i do wonder you know there's been a lot of talk about like the first 10 minutes of the episode i know i tweeted about it like it just felt so refreshing and to be honest so antithetical to modern survivor right where there was like barely any advantage talk aside from drea sharing the fact that she had an extra vote it was just about crab hunting and high sort of own moral quandary with his veganism you know when we go to taku it was all just about some some fun marianne stuff and then very, again, natural, I think, segues into the Omar and Mariah stuff. I think they've done a great job with the backstories this season of 
not being like, and I, I, I feel bad for constantly going back to JD, but like the one I constantly think back to is in the premiere of Survivor 41 when it's like JD's walking up a hill and he's like, I used to be a nerd. And it's like, that's that's <laughs> great to get to know you, but like I would rather have it come out naturally in a conversation like with Omar and Mariah who mm-hmm. disclose things to their tribes rather than just have them bring it up in confessionals. So, I mean, I do wonder when it comes to learning from 41, obviously that comes into effect with the twist. Do you, either of you wonder if that comes from the editing as well, that they like look to the storytelling choices in 41? I don't know how quick the turnaround was uh, between 41 and 42 in terms of audience response, but is it possible that they looked at how things went in the first couple of episodes in, in 41 and were like, all right, I think we can kind of tweak things just subtly to make things more palatable at the end of the day. I think it's possible that they realized that not only in 41 did we not get to know certain people, we didn't really know too much about them. That included their their winner. So I think maybe they thought to themselves, should we do be doing a better job of letting the audience know who all these people are? I mean, the thing is though, they wouldn't have had any of that feedback when they were editing the seasons because they they you know they're filmed back to back, they air they air, air almost almost back to back. So I don't know how much like they go back after 41 and like change things with the edit. Uh, Maybe they're just, you know, they have two seasons in a row that are are both, you know, three tribes, three tribe formats. They both seem to have a lot of the same twists. Maybe they're like, look, we need to give this season a slightly different feel than we did with season 41 uh, to make it more unique. Um, I'm sure, and, and it has to be editing, right? Because in 41, I'm sure people were talking about their personal lives. Like, what else are you doing out there? I'm sure they did have that that content. And I'm not even, I, I like 41. I'm not saying that 41 was... was um, a bad season by any means. I think it was a very good season. Um, but I think some of the criticisms were that, uh, you know, it was so focused on, on these twists and excursions that these, these characters were going on and the game mechanics where we, we didn't necessarily learn as much as we would have liked to. And, and even more importantly, not just learn about their personal lives, learn about the relationships between the characters. And I think we're already starting to see that more in 42 than we did at this point in 41. Mm-hmm. I, I think I know I think I know more about Omar and Jonathan's relationship than Erica and Heather who went to the end of the game yeah. last season well <laughs> right. to your point though uh, I mean I know you could also use the excuse right of like oh they never went to tribal council but so far Vati the green tribe has not gone to tribal council and I feel like I know a, a good amount about all mm. six people yeah, mm. I, I mean, we know there's the 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 three pairs. They could have a, a two v two v two situation potentially. If, well, not not really because Mike doesn't have a vote. Uh, but that I think that'll be a really if they ever do go to tribal, and I kind of don't want them to. Uh, I think that would be a pretty interesting vote to see which pairs come together to form the majority. And I really couldn't tell you what 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 would happen if they go. I mean, I I think that if you're from Daniel's point of view, if if Mike is willing to tell you about his idol clue, why would you ever want? Mike out of the game, especially when you see that he's he's like he can't even keep track of where the idol is. I feel like that's someone you you want potentially on your side, even though it's messy. It, it's someone who you, who you could probably like if you're able to like help Mike get his act together. You could maybe control his his vote once he gets it back uh, throughout the game. I I have a genuine question about losing the idol. Do you I'm like Mike? You might know this. What if he just like can't find it? What happens? I mean, I'm assuming you need a physical idol to play, but I do think if someone else, like, are you questioning if someone else uncovers it? And No, and like, what if he just can never find it again? Is it just gone? Yeah, then it's not his. It's, it's not, I mean, I what I would say is, like, he'll still get his vote back when all three phrases are said, but he just <laughs> doesn't have an idol. I mean, you don't have a metaphorical idol. The idol is not a concept. You could be like, <laughs> Jeff... I would like to play. I'm speaking my idol into existence. Like you need the little totem to well, hand like, over to him. If you lose your credit card, you can get a new one. Oh, you're talking <laughs> about like a replacement? No. Yeah, could he get I, like a replacement idol? Like in, no, in, I, in I, I, loan. <laughs> yeah, I think I think unless it's physically destroyed by like somebody else, right? If High uh. just decides screw you, Mike, and like hucks it into the ocean, then they could get a replacement. But I think because it was his own negligence that caused him to lose it, I, I think mm-hmm. he is sort of responsible here. I see. If someone else uncovers it, though, it's still not theirs, right? Because it would have to be like gifted. By my yeah, because okay. I think I think the fact that he found it sort of has, I don't know, invisibly branded it with his initials mm-hmm. right now. And so I would imagine if someone else found it, the production would sort of, I don't know, it, it's tough, right? Because they can't outright say like, no, 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 that's somebody <laughs> else's because yeah. that sort of is, is a bit of interference. But at the same time, 
Mike can't have his idol essentially stolen because he forgot where it was. I don't know. I, I think feel production like might. Yeah, I think they might just have to. S- they might just have to say like, "This is somebody's. We can't tell you whose it is, <laughs> but it's not yours." <laughs> So put it back. <laughs> put it back where you found it. I I love, by the way, first of all, I agree with you, Liana, everything about Mike. But I love the unfortunate sad thing that like Mike talks last episode, right, about like how humble his existence was, right? That's an odd phrase in and of itself. Uh, but like how he grew up like very poor and like, you know, working class and everything. And so he's like, you know, we didn't grow up with much. Uh, and then he ends up coming like, oh, I finally found this idol. And then he ends up losing it, you know, like in the first episode, yeah. he's like, you know, when I wanted lunch money, I just went to like the local wishing well and like fished out pennies to to buy my milk. And now he's like, okay, right, wait, fine, like- call, stop, pause. Was that a phrase? Yeah. So, okay. yes, Mike's phrase, Mike fungled it a little bit. If you didn't catch it, I probably would have still given him credit because, well, you know, it's more fun. But the, the phrase was when money was tight, he'd get his lunch money from the local wishing well. <laughs> so uh, the third person was tough. Yeah. 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 So unfortunately, uh, Mike, you, you do not get the points for that. Liana, you, you get one point uh, for, for calling out Mike. Leon is leading the game 1 0. Dang it. I thought I was going to do like, uh, I thought that was a good time. How poor was he? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my God. Um, but yeah, I, I will say, though, in all sincerity, I do love the fact that unfortunately, poor Mike is like, you know, I, I'm not used to growing up with much. And then he finally gets like a paycheck, a survivor paycheck in the form of this idol. And then he like loses it in the wash or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay, so what was the other thing I was going to say about Mike? Yes, so I love the discussion that Jordan kind of brought up about what's the right move here if you're Daniel? Because the discussion is like, well, so you prevent him from saying the phrase, you vote him out, um, or you know, you try to work with him to get him to say the phrase so then you know where the idol is. Because I think that there's a lot of decision points that could be made there. I think if you, if you want to have control over the idol, I, I honestly, I think you vote him out. And then you just take it. But I think having a player in the game that is close with you and is willing to share that information could almost be more valuable than the idol itself. So I think that that's kind of the debate there. Well, the question is with these beware idols, if you voted out Mike and you found it, you would then have to sacrifice your vote. Right. That's what that's what right. happened with Shan mm-hmm. after Brad was voted out. So like, that's the tough thing is that I agree if this was a normal idol, you just vote him out or like, you get him to give it to you essentially. Mm. And then, and then you vote him out. But the tough thing is that because you would know the way these idols work, but then you also, I mean, Daniel said, right, this is perfect for me. I have all the information without any of the penalty. I don't know if you want to incur that penalty. Yeah. Which is why I think voting out Mike would be a mistake here. I think what you could do to maybe take some power away from Mike, because if he does eventually get his idol, he will have the power of a hidden immunity idol. You could go for his partner, Jenny, which is an interesting move because then, but that I think you, you're painting yourself into a potential corner there because does Mike become the swing vote between the two pairs? And if Daniel and, and Chanel are the ones who are spearheading getting Jenny out, does Mike then choose to maybe go over uh, with High and Lydia? So I think it's it's a little bit dangerous. Honestly, if I'm... Uh, the the, uh, the the duo of Danielle and Chanel, uh, uh, da- Danielle and Chanel, Danielle and I, Chanel. I mean, listen, that could be their their shipping name. That, that could be that that could be their shipping move, name. But move, if I was that duo, Zachy Ann. <laughs> yeah, I I think at this point, the fact that Mike is giving you this information, I I don't think you. I, I think you potentially lose Mike as an ally if you vote out his his uh, biggest partner in Jenny. I think, and it would be unfortunate because I really like High and Lydia's characters. I think that would would be the right decision to uh to go in unless we're not seeing things where like daniel and chanel might be really close with high and lydia and maybe that's just your group maybe that's just your four and then you don't have to worry as much about it but here's the interesting thing if mike got voted out um does his idol get rehidden or does it just stay in the mike hiding place is that the new hiding oh. place which daniel knows about i don't I know mean- I don't that's think that's ever happened. Uh, I think it would get rehidden. I think it'd be akin. I mean, listen, if they want to be super lazy, they could be like, yeah, we'll just leave it in the ground. Yeah, it's in the, uh, it's in the ground, right? <laughs> yeah. No, but then, but then, and then production. Anyway. Yeah, pr- <laughs> production. Go yeah, pr- 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 uh, production just like to cover their bases could be like, yeah, it's, it's definitely not in the ground, man. Uh, yeah. And just just leave it there. <laughs> oh, man. I, I think what's tough about, about that tribe is that, so we've seen there's the three pairs, right? So we have High and Lydia, which we think are a pair we have jenny and mike who are definitely 
we've seen them now multiple times as a pair and then Daniel and Chanel together as a pair. Um, I think that it's tough because that's such a delicate situation. Like you definitely don't want to be too messy there because for example, if Daniel like tries to push something to try to get Mike out, but Mike has other relationships like that we don't know about, then that could potentially backfire because all it takes is like one, because even if Mike has lost his vote, all Jenny has to do is flip over to the other side mm -hmm. and then it's three to two, like that's done. And no one has the extra votes on that side. So I think that's what makes it really tough. And I think there's definitely an art to getting your way and spitting all of pits across the table that's just not it all right there we go <laughs> okay yeah uh, so <laughs> we are not smooth whatsoever no, what? that... spitting all of pits across the table isn't it is not a common phrase the first part was easy and then i was like i don't know how to do that i i, I, I didn't even realize you were going to me. work in the phrase there but yeah that, that's, there's an art to getting your way and spitting all, all pits across the table that is <laughs> there, there, <laughs> Is uh, like not Gina how you Cruz, get your way. Watermelon and... seed spitting champion spitting your pits across the table. Yeah, spitting no. olive pits across the table. Is Wait, olive it? olive pits? Olive yeah. pits. Oh, they said all of your pits. Oh yeah. no. So here's here's olive. yeah. Here's the good the good news. I think both of those that you've tried so far were very tough, and you yeah. both are even. You both called each other out, so we're even one one to one. Um, yes, uh, spitting <laughs> wait, spitting wait. your your lunch money across the table. That's not it. Uh, you know, some, sometimes money. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's spitting your olive pits into the wishing well yeah don't do, yeah. Don't oh, do that'd that be, either that'd be a real cheapo depot thing of like mm -hmm. listen i'm a i don't want to use coins so let me just use these pits <laughs> it's baby oh my goodness well the other thing as well too with, with all this is the, the shot in the dark as well which i have found incredibly interesting jeff Pittman pointed this out jeff uh, te Pittman. technically yeah olive jeff Pittman. olive Pittman. uh none of the 15 players left have a vote against them mm -hmm. because once again we had someone use their shot in the dark and fail in a unanimous vote against them and it didn't make me realize that what's so interesting and why again i'm fine with repeating some twists like the shot in the dark across seasons is to see how different casts adapt to it and i think th these ca this cast has figured out how to kind of like not hack the shot in the dark but at least figure out a way to work around it where there are two targets just pile all your votes onto one if they play the shot in the dark, then all the votes get voided because, again, no matter what, that person in question can't vote and then just vote for the secondary person, right? Like, mm -hmm. why throw votes onto a secondary target if you can just do it in the revote anyway? So I find that super mm -hmm. fascinating that that has been the prevailing logic both times when I believe in Survivor 41, we did not have any unanimous votes the entire season. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we also didn't see any shots in the dark played in the pre-merge anyway. So somehow it just wasn't even a factor, whereas now two tribals in a row, it has not only been discussed, but played. So I, again, yeah, I go back to what everyone has kind of theorized of like, did they describe it differently to them? In, or like, how is this sold, you know? Well, I, I will also... Oh, I was going to say, I think it's possible that what, what we've seen already from certain people, like like we, we talked about Drea, um, you know, to, uh, uh, giving away the the fact that she has an extra vote, uh, Mike giving away the fact that he has his um, he has the beware advantage. This might just be a cast of people who can't keep a secret. And and maybe even even though, you know, Jonathan uh, said, like, he's he's going to be very careful about looking uh, both Marianne and uh, Mariah in the eye uh, and, and, you know, telling them both that they're safe. Um, be because of the shot in the dark, maybe this is just a cast of, of people who are, are not good at keeping things to themselves and they give a, a lot of way. So maybe Zach and Mariah were just able to figure out, oh, the way that my tribe is acting, I'm clearly getting votes. I think that could be part of it as well. Mm -hmm. well, that's the thing. Yeah, that's that's what I point to. First off, let me correct myself that there actually were uh, quite a few number of, of unanimous votes in Survivor 41. In fact, the, the very first one against Abraham was a unanimous vote. But I do feel like, I don't know. I don't know if you could count things as a unanimous vote when like, you know, when someone loses their vote and it's like three to one, uh, it, it's sort of it is odd, great territory. But Jordan, I completely agree. I think that's the main reason is, you know, we'll talk about Mariah in a bit, obviously, but I had the chance to talk to her. She said the reason why she played the Sean in the dark is like Lindsay and Jonathan were in fact probably being a bit too cute and really staring into the curve of like, oh gosh, Mary Ann has to go <laughs> Oh, Beans, I really gonna miss that girl around camp. Uh, that really just clued her off to, okay. Wait, it's, it's, uh, phrase. 
No. <laughs> no? All beans. <laughs> oh, beans. No, that's oh, just something beans. that Mike says. <laughs> no. That's my new thing now. Beans, baby. All oh, beans. All beans. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that, and with Zach as well, like, he's obviously very cerebrally oriented. Uh, I think he was someone who was, like, very cognizant. He talked to me about this last week as well. Of, well, listen, if the vote's either against me or against Tory, and it's going to be unanimous either way, my vote doesn't matter. So I do think it's a combination of, some players just being like, well, if it's all against me, I might as well play it. And combined with someone like Mariah really sensing that these people are doing something under her nose, right? I really commend people like Shannon Ricard, who did keep people like Brad, like JD, even like Jeannie, so snowed over mm -hmm. in the premers that they did not even consider doing it. Uh, I do not know if these players are necessarily able to do that this time around. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think you sort of have to be... I wouldn't necessarily say a psychopath, but I think you necessarily have, you have to have some sort of like psychopathic qualities, I think, to really make people feel comfortable before you vote out them out as a survivor. And I mean that in a good way as a survivor player. I, I, I think it really helps you in the game to be able to convincingly make someone feel extremely safe. And it's, you know, it probably feels a little bit dirty to do. And Shan was great at it, obviously, especially in, in, in the pre-merge uh, uh, before, before sending them out the door, make them feel like your best friend, make them feel comfortable and, and don't lay it on. So thick, like apparently, like apparently Jonathan and uh, um, is it weird that I, that I remember that her last name is Delashalish, but just forgot her first name, Lindsay. Yeah, it is. That's very strange. <laughs> that is weird. <laughs> yeah, that's weird. Yeah, like she's I, I'm surprised she's not going by Delashawis at this point. Is, is that because she's a Jew, Jordan? You were just like, so you're like, you're really focused on like, okay, what's the Ellis Island story behind the Jalashowicz name? P possible, possibly, but I, I didn't know. Like, I, I thought maybe she, she was Jewish until she uh, talked about it in the, in this episode. Mm -hmm. But maybe that's part of it. But I should have remembered, um, you know, Lindsay with all the uh, uh, great history of Lindsay's in Survivor history. I, I she might be the the most impressive one at this point. Even if she gets voted out like next episode, she, I think she's playing a good game. Oh, Lindsay, yeah, I'm really. Uh, Lindsay seems really sociable and yeah. seems to be making really strong bonds. I'm really impressed with her as well. I wish I hadn't been so low on her in the preseason. I think that she's mm -hmm. somebody who, um, who I think could be really strong and make it deep into the game, especially because I feel like Orange is still really strong as a tribe. So I, yeah, I, I think we're gonna get a Yasa situation, honestly, yeah. from Orange. Where like they went to Tribal Council early, though. Granted, uh, one thing was out of their control in the departure right. of Jackson but I was a little surprised to see them go to tribal council here but I really do have a sense that like especially with all the Jonathan talk this episode right of like we just need to proceed with a strong four that was one of the reasons why Mariah goes over Marianne that I could see this like small but strong foursome just go ahead and like keep crushing challenges moving forward especially as like the other two tribes begin to slowly crumble around them Mm -hmm. Yeah. So d does that make I guess I guess the most likely to most likely person to be the uh, the Liana and turn on them I think would be Marianne because she probably realizes she was the other potential option there even though Liana was in a much better position on on Yasa than uh, Marianne Marianne is on uh, on uh, the Orange Tribe. Mm -hmm. I there's another person who I want to talk about Drea because we've mentioned her uh, a little bit with the discussion of like oh you know her telling the other women about the extra vote making the extra um like the extra alliance with the women because mm -hmm. I think like we can all kind of agree why would you do that <laughs> <laughs> right like why would you tell them about the extra vote it's not relevant right now she just yeah. wanted to be like is it like a, a um peace offering like that kind of thing where it's like yeah look let me just be 100 straight i'm 100 in on this like let me tell you i got this extra vote well i think part of it is unfortunately while we did get to see a lot in the premiere i think something that we really missed out on was having those three come back from shipwheel island and mm -hmm. talk about what happened you know mariah told me that one of the reasons why they really started to target marianne was because when she came back she was just all over the place when mm. telling the story that like she was fine when it got to the actual part of oh we climbed the hill we had some chats and then it's clear she was trying to fib about the whole ship wheel thing and it just sort of like all flew out of place as is uh you know maybe a bit commiserate with with marianne and, and who she is delightfully so that i wonder if with drea she was probably tight-lipped about stuff and i wonder if she has this paranoia right of like they probably think i had something let me be quote unquote upfront. But I agree, Leon, it's an interesting thing to offer considering that they already would have had presumably three out of five anyway, right? It's not like we're saying, okay, we're going to go in three against three here. There are five people left on the tribe. She could have just approached Tor Tori and Swathi and been like, 
okay, let's work together. That's three out of five. Yeah. We're, we're golden from that regard. I don't know if her offering the extra vote to guarantee that they have like the super majority is something that's necessary information to volunteer at this point. <sighs> Drea is just so direct and intense and I'm kind of obsessed with her, but yeah. I can see how that type of personality could really bite her if she's able to make it to the final tribal. Because I feel like since she has such a one direct mind on like how one she's going to one direction. Yeah. On how she sees her game and how she feels, she's just going to be like so blunt about the whole thing. I feel like her and Marianne almost in two different ways have like similar issues of they both have such intense personalities, but almost in very different directions. Like Drea is just like, hmm. da, 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 and Marianne is very like, so happy energy intense that I just wonder if they're trying to like when they get to the final tribal and they have to talk about their games, like how much are they going to be able to be self-aware about who they are? Or are they going to have a difficult time owning up to their own crazy selves? Yeah, it's a good point. I'm not sure with Marianne because I love her, but I am also really intrigued to see her in a final tribal council situation where it's like, you give Marianne 10 words, she gives you back a thousand, uh, mm -hmm. which is fantastic if you're paying by the word. At the same time, that might be something that makes people kind of like fall asleep a la listening to Coach's poem uh, in, in Token Cheese, right? Mar Mar Mariah vocalizes this really interestingly, right? Of I don't know if I can put up with 26 days of this. I do wonder when starvation really comes into play, is that even going to wear down like start dimming the brightest bulbs or is she just going to broad to brighten even further and mm -hmm. just be like even more manic in a manner of speaking and just go completely off the wall. I think that's very possible. And like you talked about giving 10 words, you just gave Liana a lot more than 10 seconds because she said her phrase, she had a difficult time owning up to her own crazy self. Boom. Wow. That was actually a very good. And you said that was generated. That was generated. That's yeah. very normal. So Liana, you, <laughs> yeah, get, you, get two, you get two points there. You're, nice you're leading the game okay. three to one. Congratulations. Okay. Nerve wracking. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I meant everything I was saying though. Like that wasn't just a setup for the phrase. No, like, it was, I genuinely it was, thought about that. Okay. <laughs> it, it, it was it was great. Um, and yeah, the, the way that you worked it into that phrase makes me want to cry. Ooh, it does. It makes me want to cry. Yeah. yeah. I just, oh my God. I just can't imagine Marianne at Final Tribal. I, uh, but like, I also can, and I really want to see it. Same with Drea. Yeah. She's j j like, okay, especially so you're, you're someone, manifesting two of the final three at this point. I really want that. If, if someone comes up to Drea's like, I feel betrayed. I just feel like Drea's gonna be like, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I backstabbed you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, I, but go, going back to, going back to Drea, I, I think if she, you know, the fact that like, you know, she has, she has the extra vote and she's going to the other two women on her tribe, if she starts. And I, I mean, I, I think that is maybe what she was insinuating or, or, or planning when she brought up the fact that they would have like a, a, a you know, a way to combat a, um, you know, an idle play of, since, since they're able with a four to two advantage, split the votes. I feel like if Dreya starts talking about that though, you're even more wary of her. And th there was really, really no reason uh, to bring this up. And I think any time on a, a tribe of five people, if you're talking to two other people, it's great to bring up, let's work together. We have the majority in this conversation right now. You should probably be doing that in multiple groups. I mean, maybe that's a little bit of a dangerous way to play, but I think if you're doing it in a way that's that seems natural, that just seems like, oh, we're, we're clicking well, why don't we become the majority on this tribe and work together? Great. Um, I think Drea might get her get herself into some trouble here, especially um, if, if uh, you know, uh, you know, Swathi, um, can easily say to Tori, look, Tori was, uh, 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 could say to Tori, look, Drea was targeting you last round, which Tori probably already knows. So I, I think that could end up being, mm -hmm. um, trouble for Drea if, if that tribe goes back to tribal. All right. Well, yeah. let, let, let's focus on Taku. Let's focus on the orange as it were, because let, let's segue to our preseason predictions for Mariah, uh, mm -hmm. who, you know, I'm very happy that she was able to shed, uh, some light on her very heartbreaking story. Do find it very interesting. I talked about it with her in her exit interview that uh, she did not end up burying that necklace out there. She very much had a change of heart of like, okay, maybe this is not the time or place. Uh, so interestingly, you know, she came for closure, but I think she left with something else. That door was kept ajar for at least a little bit of time. Let's talk about how we thought she would do preseason. So Liana, I will start with you. What did you think about Mariah's preseason prospects? 
Okay. So I had her uh, in the final three as a losing finalist. So real good for me here. Mm -hmm. I wrote Mariah benefits from the Orange Tribe, not going to tribal early. So she's able to slide by to the merge. Because of her social game, she's able to slide under the radar while the challenge beasts, Jonathan, Lindsay, Drea, are taken out one by one post merge. Ooh. <sighs> Unfortunately, in the final tribal council, the jury either feels betrayed by their motherly figure or feels like she rode the coattails of the other players. So she only received one vote. I said that she did not play her shot in the dark. Her ally was Jackson and her enemy was Jonathan. Liana, you think you have terrible prospects. Oh, no. Let me join you on the bottom there. What did the brand steel <laughs> say, Mike? I slashed the brand steel that yeah. I ran. Also had Mariah as a losing finalist. Oh wow. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so I so had her. Happened? So according to the brand steel, she found the first advantage of the season. And this was uh, the Heroes, Healers, Hustlers one. So this was like. For them, it was the the super idol that you could give to somebody else on another mm. tribe, uh, which she does not end up doing. She finds an idol, which she then misplays. I said that she would fly under the radar during the pre-merge, but then she becomes a big target post-merge. Uh, she ends up winning one immunity challenge. She is initially part of a Taku Alliance post-merge, but then she becomes a free agent and actually votes against them. Mm. Uh, she makes strong and useful endgame bonds that get her to the final three. She receives two jury votes, and then she ends up actually casting the tiebreaker Ooh. vote. I won't say Ooh. who it is, but again, in true brain steel fashion, we have a tie at the final three, wow. which is wild. But I also had her finishing in third place. Uh, okay. Her closest ally was Lindsay. Her worst enemy was Jackson. And hmm. as you recall, I also, a la Jordan Kalish, I don't know if we actually use the same website, but I also randomly generated a phrase for each one of these players. This is the phrase I had for Mariah. There were four people playing the game. Her, her boyfriend, her boyfriend's roommate, Steve, <laughs> and Steve's girlfriend, Kara. <laughs> so Steve Wright and Kara K unfortunately did not play on this on this season. Oh my god, but man, um, they would have made a hell of talk about like uh that would be a good May, alliance. December, like May and June of next year romance. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's yeah. so funny i like that's that so i like that the last week they were both like very normal phrases that people say and this is the most yeah. specific thing ever that's what I, I told you like there were gonna be some randos pulled uh. here we just happened to pull a random a really bad one this past yeah. week yeah like that's not a common phrase right you wouldn't see that on a pillow <laughs> I, mean, I hope could. not unless you're within yeah. the home of steve and cara yeah it's yeah. like you have one to like live laugh love and the other one is only four <laughs> people were playing the game steve my boyfriend cara and whoever yeah, this is, is this hitting at some sort of like blood versus water season where it's like me and my boyfriend are allying mm. with my boyfriend's roommate Steve and his girlfriend Kara? Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So, oh, so in ter in terms of your predictions for for Mariah, you were both way off. Uh, you both had them in third place. So I sort of have to like like Mariah did in this fictional brand steel. Like I have to sort of go to a tiebreaker. Um, you did say that uh, Mariah would receive. Two jury votes. <laughs> Liana said one jury <laughs> vote, which is closer to the zero that she got. And then also, Mike, you said that she was going to cast a tiebreaker vote at the end. Mariah never casted any votes. So I have to give the win to Liana in, in a pretty, pretty bad prediction from both of you, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, this is like who was the least bad, right? <laughs> of the two. Yeah. Oh man, that's I never, I never would have thought. All right, well, <laughs> good job, Brant Steele slash Liana. Yeah, exactly. We were. I, that, does that feel make you feel good, Liana? That like you were as equally bad as predicting this as a as a Brant Steele was. Yeah, that makes me feel great, Mike. Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh my goodness. I, I really just love this Taku tribe in general too. I, I feel like we're not going back to tribal council, but like I was not expecting the, a lot of these things to work out. I guess I was, Rob and I talked about this in the preseason, right? Like the Mariah Jackson thing. I think she mm -hmm. was certainly impaired by the fact that Jackson left. She did tell me once he left, like, I don't, I don't, I had no idea what I was doing, which was honestly refreshing for a, a modern survivor player to hear. But the Omar Jonathan thing, I don't know, really took me by surprise personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, yeah, a buddy duo comedy like style uh, is kind of how it feels. Oh, the Christian boy, the Muslim man, like coming together to play Survivor <laughs> or whatever. 
Poor, I'm like, how how younger is Jonathan than uh, than Omar? If he has to be the Christian boy versus the Muslim man, <laughs> well, I wanted the alliteration, and then I couldn't. The um, Jonathan is two child. years younger than Omar. The Christian child. The Christian. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Christian child. <laughs> mm. No, yeah, it's, I I really love that relationship that we that we're seeing uh, develop in in this episode. Um, you know, people are comparing it uh, to Stephen and JT. I definitely see, see that. Uh, um, you know, Jonathan's challenge performance has been, uh, you know, really epic so far. Just like we have seen Stephen do in the past. Uh, so yeah, I, I really can see how that's. <laughs> Wait, oh, it's so the other way. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, isn't, it, isn't that, isn't I that mean, what? To be doing? fair, Omar JT, JT is a right? cattle rancher. And Omar has been making so many animal references throughout his two episodes on the show. Do you there think it's go. because he is paranoid about like how he's going to be in the game? And he's just like, let me get as many nature references out there as I can. Yeah, I think he came in with uh, with with a book full of uh, uh, of animal references he wanted to make. And he's just checking him off his list. Wait, why? Why does being paranoid in the game correlate with making animal references? Well, because well, it's like, hey, I want to come on the show and like do kooky things. Oh my god, I might only have one episode. Oh, here. Let I me see. like throw everything gotta, out there. Got to pack in the kooky. Mm. Well, because he had what? So he had the the pigeon and the owl stuff mm -hmm. last week. In addition to, I might have my hand up a rhino's butt. Mm -hmm. uh, this week was not like animalistic, but it was about this whole idea of like survival of the fittest, natural selection. Right. Like, I mean, Omar is sort of like a Dr. Doolittle, but I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm a I'm a party animal, but I don't like animal parties. And it seems like Omar is throwing a real animal party <laughs> phrase. Yes, <laughs> I'm a, I like how you worked it in. I knew you were going to go Omar then when I gave you that phrase. I I'm not a party animal, but I do like animal parties. <laughs> it's, it's not untrue. I yeah. do often like and animal parties. Honestly, Mike, I could see you saying that without, yeah. without these yeah. phrases, which I try to do. Like it doesn't work for all of them. Uh, but but yeah, that's uh, so. Liana, you get another point. You're you're uh, you have a nice lead here. You have a a five to one Nervous. lead, which usually in a six person tribe, if it's a unanimous vote, it would be a, a five to one vote. Uh, Can Mike play a shot a in the dark? Listen, and... I, yeah. I don't want to change the rules on the fly here. I think Liana might should be dock something for incorrectly guessing all Yeah, I here. thought, don't you take away a point if you guess Oh, incorrectly? you know what? I didn't say that before. You do lose a point for saying it. So you actually have yeah. a, uh, a, a uh, three, four. four. So one. Four to one. Yeah, three to one. Four to one. Well, I well think I, no, it was, no, it's, it's three. It's, it's three still, it's still three yeah. to one. Yeah. Not damn it, Kalish math. This is Kalish math, and I said five to one, which math. also would have been not true. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. Okay, it is three. It is three to one. Uh, yeah. Um, clearly, my my math skills have not changed uh, over the years, uh, like like a lot of things from uh, from forty one. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jordan, let me let me give you a chance to redeem yourself here. Sure. I know that you, in addition to these phrases, you also came in with a little bit of a game for us yeah. to to play today. What do you have in store for of, us? Of course, I did. So, so um, you know, this was episode two, uh, and the game that I have come up with was really inspired by by episode one. But I think that's okay. I I think that we you know we have been talking about a lot of the things that have been reused on the season. One of them was the savvy or sweat twist, and of course they changed it up a little bit to basically force the tribes in, into like into doing the the triangles. The, Are you the savvy... sure you don't want to twist the triangles? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know we saw some interesting guesses where where uh, where uh, Jonathan uh, thought there were eleven triangles. Uh, so we did get some some good scenes out of that. I'm happy they you know they made the beginning of the season feel different than the beginning of last one. Um, so. I thought about savvy or sweat. Um, I didn't really want to make you guys count triangles on a podcast. I think that would be bad podcasting. You're both in the tri-state area. I thought about making you do sweat and like carrying like a bucket of water to, to my apartment in the in the Bronx. Like, but I realized like hell no, that's this kind isn't of... making the band. I'm not doing your things, Diddy <laughs> So yeah, this is this is it wasn't really feasible. So I decided to change savvy or sweat slightly, which the game is now Savai or Chet. I have oh a bunch God. of quotes. <laughs> the quotes were either said by Chet from Survivor Micronesia or a member of the Savai tribe. I'm going to read the quote and you're going to have to tell me if it's a member of Savai or <laughs> Chet. And if it's a member of Savai, you could get a bonus point by telling me which member of Savai said the okay. phrase. So. I would rather carry a bucket of water to your apartment <laughs> in the bro. Is that still an option, Jordan? Um, if you really want to, I mean, you know, 
it, it would be a, a, a bit of a walk, a bit of a track. Okay. Uh -huh. yeah. This is interesting because actually you say like on paper, this is ridiculous, but I believe Savai and chat nearly had an equal amount of episodes. I believe chat lasted for six episodes, I think on uh, Survivor Micronesia and Savai lasted seven episodes. So I don't know from sure. an airtime perspective, it still might not balance out, but from like that number alone, they essentially have the same lifespan within Survivor. I, I, I think it, I think it works. I think it works. And the way that uh, the, the we'll, we'll do, we'll do points for this one too. Well, maybe I'll get my math right this time. Uh, I'm, you're going to buzz in. If you are, uh, if if you're correct, you get a point. If you if it's Savai and you get a uh, and you could tell me who it is, you get a bonus point. Um, if it's Savai and you are wrong, your opponent has a chance to also get a point uh, from knowing which member of Savai it was. Got so, it. so you'll say you'll say you're correct, but you got the person wrong. Cor correct. Yes. So okay. Savai, uh, how are we buzzing in, Liana? What's what's your buzzword going to be? Sprouts. Sprouts. Mike, what's your buzzword? Uh so mine is going to be in honor of the blindfold challenge where Jonathan uh, got really hoarse a la James Clement by the end. And he kind of had like a Batman voice mm -hmm. going on, <laughs> yes. uh, mm -hmm. which was really funny. He was like, it's a pizza. Yeah, so it had this fantastic <laughs> image. So I'm going to go with uh, pizza in honor of Jonathan Batman. Okay. So we have pizza and we have sprouts. And I'm going to start by reading the first quote. I consider myself like a more edgy Ozzy. I can pretty much do what he's done, except I'm a little bit more out there. Pizza. Mike. I'll go with Savai. It was not Savai, so the answer is Chet. Uh, he actually talked about that in his in his pregame video that he, that he filmed. What? Yes, this, some of these are not from the episode. <laughs> Yeah, but that, I was, I was that trying to think, a... like I'm I'm pretty sure like Jason Siska compared himself to Ozzy, but I didn't yes, think apparently Chet, Chet, did. Chet did too. I think a lot of people compared themselves to Ozzy. I think maybe Eric Reichenbach also uh, was an Ozzy fan going out there. I don't know if he left as an Ozzy fan, uh, but yeah, that that was Chet. He sees himself like a more edgy Ozzy, and he could do what he's done, except he's a little more out there. I think that's a weird assessment of uh, a weird self assessment by Chet, but I would is... also say that uh, I think Ozzy in 2022 would call himself a more out there version of Ozzy compared to where he was in 2008. <laughs> in that's true. Yeah. Or maybe Ozzy's comparing himself to Chet these days. I'm a, I'm a more out there version of Chet. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, okay. Question uh, quote number two There is not one thing I would not do for my lover, my best friend, my honey, my brother. So buy a bad pizza. Mike. <laughs> Uh, that is Savai, and that is Semhar giving Savai her poem at uh, Redemption Island. Yeah, some people <laughs> like to, uh, you know, create a poem and and read that poem for the mass audiences to consume. Uh, Semhar did it with uh, with her great poem about Bubernus, and I did it about, about my great poem about seeds. I w I always assumed that was about Bubernus, right? Isn't that the yeah? Bird? I mean, listen, she loved the flaws or whatever was on his stupid hat throughout Survivor Fiji. <laughs> Yeah, so, so Mike, you have a, a, a two a two zero lead in this game. Um, and let's go to the next quote. I work my ass off around camp, even though I'm not the big provider like Ozzy. Ooh. Hmm. A lot of Ozzy Collins here because of the fact that he was the, <laughs> I mean, he is the link nice between Shad and Savai. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh I'll just to steal a point away from Mike just in case. Sprouts. Okay, Liana. I'll say chat. It was not Chet. It oh. was Savai. Mike, you can't get the point for Savai, but you could get the bonus point. Who said oh, that? What? Uh, I will say, can you read the quote one more time? I work my ass off around camp, even though I'm not the big provider like Ozzy. I'm gonna, that sounds like a Jim Rice quote. It is not. It was Cochran. Cochran, Cochran known, known these people. <laughs> I don't know. Ah, no, yes. very, known uh, hard worker at camp. He's like known for like building shelters and catching fish. Um, yeah, uh, he 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 was the one who said that. The, one of uh, Cochran's most famous quotes on Survivor. Yeah, um, I mean yeah. Cochran. I don't we know. If, I, I mean, hard work can also be done through telling stories about oral herpes and <laughs> shitting himself in kindergarten. Sure, I was that can be considered hard work. Somewhat close to using the oral herpes quote <laughs> on here. <laughs> that which would probably also have a connection to Ozzy. <laughs> oh, <no. Aww. laughs> yeah uh okay uh, next next quote i'd be willing to go sacrifice myself oh pizza yes mike i gotta assume that's chet that is not chet uh, liana was it, was it ozzy <laughs> well Okay, well, I'll guess Ozzy. <laughs> it, it was Ozzy, unfortunately. Like you just gave Leon. I, I forgot. I forgot. I mean, if I that guess makes sense, Sabayi. right? 
Yes, yeah. it was when he was talking about sacrificing himself yeah. to go to Redemption Island. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes. So that 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 was a confusing. Like I put that one in on purpose. I knew that was going to sound like Chet uh, when he wanted to get voted out of the game. So, uh, Mike, you have a two to one lead. Uh, next quote: I've always liked chickens. I've had a special bond with chickens pretty much my whole life. Oh, pizza, Mike. That is Chet, because I do believe he was the chicken whisperer on Malakal. That is that is correct, uh, Chet. Um, Sari once said that the chickens were never the same when, when Chet left. And Chet has actually said that that was his uh, his biggest accomplishment on Survivor, was Sari saying that the chickens were in the, were in the Aww, same wow. when he left the island. So, Sia, Mike, you have a... Sia really was uh, t- hopped on the show too late. Yeah. Otherwise, Chet would have... Oh, Chet would have 100% gotten the, the, Sia, the Sia money. And, Mike, you have a w- three three to one lead. I was thinking about that, actually, with all the high stuff going on, which I thought, again, was was really interestingly done. And I'm so glad they highlighted a conflict that I know many vegans have had on the show time and time again. But there is a little voice at the back of my head, right? That was like, you think she is watching this? You think she might give him money? So I think, unfortunately for these players, I, I think when it comes to playing the game uh, dangerously, I think, unfortunately, that means no guaranteed money from Sia because uh, I don't know if her Survivor fandom is... The most of her concerns at the moment. Mm-hmm. Mm, yeah, she's mm. had a she's had mm. an interesting interesting journey uh, outside of outside of Survivor. <laughs> 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 so let's go to the next quote. This isn't going to be. A, I, mean, I thought Mike was frozen, but he just blinked. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Yeah. I, it wasn't. It wasn't anything. No. Oh, okay. <sighs> Are you sure? Or are you lying to me? I no, didn't know. What, 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 what were you trying I, to flag? I don't know. There's just a lot of weird words in that <laughs> sentence. Have you heard this guy speak? Yeah, this is like, I'm, I'm just like the Turing <laughs> test. You listen to the b and <laughs> No, I know. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Continue, next, Jordan. Next quote. You disgust me. <laughs> Pizza. Mike. That was Savaye and that was Whitney Duncan, baby. Whitney Duncan. Well, <laughs> so you get two more points. Is that your pet name for her? Oh my God. Yes. No. <laughs> oh, Whitney Duncan. Yeah, I feel like that's the same as when I, when I said uh, da- Danielle and Chanel. Uh, Whitney Duncan. <laughs> oh, Whitney Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> all right so yeah the, mike you have a five to one lead and like the unlike the last time i said somebody had a five to one lead that is actually the score <laughs> um okay next quote my biggest regret i was way too nice that is not me Ooh. uh d- 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 sprouts liana chat that is chat that was from chet's uh quarantine conversation with dalton ross uh so you you, you get a point uh it is five to two you have two more left okay I'm at the cool kids' table, but I'm barely at the cool kids' table. Uh, pizza. Mike. So I'm going to say Savaye because I don't think it Chef is, was ever at the cool kids' table. It is Savaye, so you get a point. You get a chance to uh, gain one more. Talking about barely at the cool kids' table, I'm going to go once again with Jim Rice because I'm pretty sure Jim was the one to help spur the whole like Elise plot forward and turn on the cool kids. That is exactly correct. Uh, you get two, so you get two points. You have a seven to two lead. Uh, uh, yeah, J- Jim Rice was was in the alliance with with uh, Keith and Ozzy, uh, Elise and Whitney, uh, classic and Whitney classic Dunkey. foursome. And w- <laughs> Whitney Dunkey, of course, was a big part of that alliance. Yeah, uh, J- Jim Rice, um, you know, saw himself as you know in the alliance, but sort of on on, on the outs as well because he saw how how close those other two pairs were, um, and uh, he he was able to put together that uh, that blind side of Elise. Um, so that, that is correct. You have a seven to two lead. So unfortunately, Liana, you, you are mathematically eliminated, but we have one more Ooh. quote and we're going to go to the last quote. Everybody is half win and half lose. The lose half is afraid. The winning half is fearless. What the <laughs> hell? That sounds like a random phrase that you that, that sounds like That does sound like a Batman <laughs> phrase. Of like everyone has two sides, two face. Don't win excited, don't lose excited. <laughs> Uh, everyone has two sides. Uh, okay, but Sprouts, Savai, I guess. I don't it, know. Unfortunately, it is not Savai. <laughs> it is Chet, 
But it is not Win. Chet from Survivor Micronesia. It is Chet Stedman from the movie Rookie of the Year, played by Gary Busey. Wow, <laughs> that was a Jordan. that was never going to okay. count. That was never going to actually count as points. That was just I was going to say I like I never. I never said it was Chet from Survivor. <laughs> I, I did specifically <laughs> did say, say it was Chet, Chet from Survivor. So that was never oh. going to actually be points. This was from the, uh, the the speech that, of course, Chet Stedman gave when he vis- visits Henry Rohngartner on the mound. Uh, and of course, we we all remember the scene where uh, he he said you have to you, you do it from the have to it made no mm-hmm. sense it made just as much sense as anything that gary Busey has ever said <laughs> that's right we all remember that that's yeah. I, you should, you should, uh, next memory. time jaron will have you on we'll do chet from survivor or chet hanks who said what <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i couldn't right think of now. any other chets besides stedman or welsh from survivor <laughs> Yeah, well, Chet, I mean, listen, uh, Chet Hanks would certainly have some comments about, like, uh, the hot girl summers on the beach or what what have you. Because I think this did film during summer as well. That's the only thing I know Chet Hanks for was his comment on hot girl summer. <laughs> so, so do you think now now that we've seen we've seen Sa- Savai or Sweat played out twice, we've seen, uh, sorry, is that Savai or Sweat played out twice? Savai <laughs> or Chet played out once. Do you think there's any chance that Survivor uses this as the opening uh, twist in a future season of Survivor? I think you had a really great pitch for it, Jordan, you know, came out really strong. <laughs> well, they keep bringing on these super fans of Survivor. Like this might be more than ever the time to do something like this. That's true. Yeah. If any group is going to be willing to do something like this, it would uh-huh. be all the super fans that they're bringing on. Yeah, Unless they're gonna, at at Tribal like- Council, like the future Zach Wurtenberger of like season 45 is going to be like, as 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 Chet Welch once said in his, in his <laughs> quarantine conversation, my biggest regret, I was way too nice. <laughs> I mean, we are getting to that point though right like remember when Deshaun quoted gabby's Mm -hmm. random ass thing from david versus goliath like we're slowly but surely getting there so yeah yeah Yeah. i think you both played that game with with a lot of gumption though so even though mike won i congratulate both of you all right well thank you jordan okay well now uh let's let's turn the tables jordan and have you play a little game with us so Obviously, big story of tonight's episode was the Mary Ann Zach love connection, or maybe lack thereof <laughs> love connection. So we have come up with a game called Survivor Missed Connections. Ooh. So as you may know, on Craigslist, they have the Missed Connection section, which is a personal ad where you can, you know, write, oh, I, I saw you on the subway, blah, 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 whatever. Uh, so what I've done is I have written Survivor Missed Connections from just a generic person's point of view. The person who wrote it is not important, but you're going to okay. try to guess who this is about. So for example, I'm going to give a short little snippet of one. You smiled at me on the beach. You were wearing a cute little bee hat that fit you just right. So obviously, Boston Rob. So what uh, what we'll have you do is we'll do another buzz in. So Mike, do you want to keep so your we're guessing, uh, Batman pizza? We're guessing who the post is about. Subject. Who it's yeah. about, yes. Okay. Um, it's written by, will... that doesn't matter. I will change it up. Uh, I will say protect the balls in honor okay. of one a fantastic sit out quote from Daniel Strunk. Okay, protect your balls. And Jordan, what do you want? No, the, the balls. The balls. Oh, I want to make sure I do not misquote him here. Gotta yeah. protect the balls, Rox okay. Roy, is I believe right. the full quote. Um, I, I, I will go with, uh, you know, we were just talking about Gabby Pescuzzi. I'll go with gumption. Gumption. Okay. So those are your two buzz in phrases. So if you buzz in, you can buzz in at any time also. So if in the middle of me reading it, you don't have to wait until it's over. Yes, you can buzz in. But if you buzz in too early and you get it wrong, because what will happen is I will continue to read the rest of the Mm. the ad and the other person has an opportunity to guess. Okay. So there's uh, pros and cons, obviously making lots of decisions. So Let's kick things off with our first missed survivor okay. missed connection. Ooh. I first saw you running down the beach with such grace. Even when you face planted in the sand, Gumption. it was. God, yes, damn it. Jordan. Uh, I am going to say uh, Crystal Cox. That is incorrect. Ooh. I will continue to read. Keep Mike going. I, think, I think I know what it is. But I just want to double check. Okay. Even when you face planted into the sand, it was still majestic. You were such an idol on the island when you hid behind that palm frond or when you yep. licked up the sugar, but especially when you burned that nasty man's hat. Yeah, this is uh, someone who recently went down under alongside little Roy Kent. We're talking about Sandra Diaz Twine, baby. Yes, that is correct. Okay, so Mike, you have one point going into our second missed connection. 
From the moment I laid eyes on you, I knew you were the one for me. You were wearing a blue denim hat and your pectoral muscles were on display. Nipples festooned with jewelry. I wish oh, you could protect, protect grab- the balls. Yes, my is this is this Dr. Sean? <laughs> yeah. Festooned. Nice word. All I need is the nipple clip before I know it was Dr. Sean. Yeah, and Liana, you you got your phrase of uh nipples uh festooned, festooned with jewelry. Yes, nice thank word. you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh yes, of course. Wow, yeah. that would be a really good pivot on your part to include one of these in a game. That would yeah. be third three-dimensional four-dimensional fifth dimensional chess <laughs> i need to uh yeah wait hold on just copying pasting in <laughs> one of my phrases okay i didn't even, i didn't remember that he wore a denim hat uh yeah he wore a denim well i think it was denim it's definitely blue but i i can't 100 why tell would you denim. wear a denim hat on this show <laughs> i don't know definitely a choice uh but the rest of it is i wish you could grab my pole like you did on my television screen oh, that'd be super the last moment i saw you was when you got on the train to alphabet city <laughs> so <laughs> that's cute <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> that's why i wanted to read it all right here's our next one <clears throat> I remember clearly when I first noticed you because you were sitting on a jet ski that was just parked in the sand. It seemed like you were the balls. Yes. Chris Noble. (laughs) Yeah. Going okay. back to his Ponderosa Yeah, that was from filming. his Ponderosa video. Mm, it seemed like you were filming some type like, of video. Who's on a jet ski on Survivor? <laughs> Jeff, well, Jeff, Jeff Probst, memorably. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. Um, yeah, I said maybe you were singing. You were wearing aviator sunglasses and a skin-tight blue brief swim trunks. Quite scandalous. Let me be your queen, oh noble one. All right. So, Leon, I'm just questioning here. Are you? <laughs> do you have, like, a, a picture-perfect memory of the outfits these people are wearing? Or did you go back to the video to be like, what's Chris Noble donning during his Well, I remember he was video? wearing aviator sunglasses because there's a shot of him in the pool with aviators on. And so mm. then I pulled up the video, and then I was like, oh, he's wearing, like, blue swim trunks. So Does that still exist? I remember it got pulled from the internet for a good portion of time. His whole Ponderosa video was on the internet, and that's where oh. I found it. But, yeah, the actual rap itself got pulled. But there, And I don't – I can't remember if it was, like, just – some person who had uploaded the YouTube video or if I don't think it was specifically CBS because the mm. quality was a little like mm, questionable. It wasn't I like thought the that same was level. lost, lost to, to time. I thought, well, I, I, think I have an audio. Up. I have pulled the audio Ooh. and I have that MP3 saved. So wow. don't worry. The song I could put it on your, never be lost. You play on your Zoom whenever you get <laughs> working out. Yeah. It's, it's backed up to, uh, to Google also. So I have that, you know, don't worry. We we're safe. All right. Here's our next ad. Wait, what's my my buzz? A gumption, yeah. Gumption. <laughs> <laughs> I first saw you surrounded by chickens, talking to them as if they were your own children. Gumption. Yes. Shambo. Yeah, that's correct. No, I was I was thinking I was like, let me go a little bit further. I'm pretty sure it's Shambo though. Because I mean, it could have been could have been Ty, right? Could like, have been, been a lot. Of, it could have been it could have been Chet. <laughs> I tried to make the first one like could could be multiple people to kind of play with yeah. that but yeah how could i, forget I clearly your- have no impulse control with my <laughs> no. all or nothing for you how could i forget your camo shorts and hair sprouting over your headband Sprout. like a mushroom growing from your scalp i rem- i dream the way you dream of chickens your behavior was anything but feckless so. that's the oh, oddest way i've heard shambo's hairstyle described <laughs> like a mushroom sprouting out of her head it looks like like she's got the the <laughs> mullet in the back yeah but I don't then think I would describe a mullet part. as a mushroom out of your head well the top part is like poofy yeah. it's curly and poofy so it comes out like a little mushroom cloud yeah i'm, th- I'm thinking more so back to like the seventh grade bowl cut you know yeah. uh yeah okay this, no, business in the front animal party in the back <laughs> okay chickens specifically <laughs> here's your next misconnection It took a few minutes for me to notice you because you floated like a ghost around the island. You were wearing purple and maybe a black swimsuit? Gumption. Yes. Chelsea from Ghost Island. Yes, that is correct. I was wondering if it was PK herself, but good call on the ghost call out, Jordan. Yeah, I wish there was more I remembered about you, to be honest. I mostly remember you sitting. (laughs) She did Poor Chelsea. I know. She do you think sat. Chelsea's watching? Well, I was gonna say, do you think Chelsea's watching this season? I could have stopped it right there, but do you think Chelsea's watching this season, being like, "What the hell? All these people are getting airtime." <laughs> I think yeah. so. Her, her and Heather have a support group, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Uh, did you see Heather did tweet out something being like, "What people are actually getting personal yeah. content? Mm-hmm. Get her Jane." <laughs> yeah, and and do you think Chelsea listens to this podcast? 
Oh, 100%. No. Good. But, she yeah. should. She's uh, writes in frequently, suggesting games, all of that. This is actually yeah. her idea. So, yeah. Wow. Thank you, Chelsea. Wow. Good job, did, Chelsea. Did, you wanna, uh, did she uh, write that one for you? <laughs> yeah. That's she how actually... she knew exactly what she was wearing. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, okay. So, let me read the next one. Okay. The first thing I noticed about you was your height as you towered above all the other people. You could help me get things that were up on shelves or in trees, you know, things that are definitely not on the ground. I can't remember exactly what you were wearing, but I think you were wearing a tool belt with lawn clippers or maybe balls. it was a football helmet. Yes. Yeah. Mike. Was this Gary Hogaboom yeah. slash Hawkins? Yes, that is correct. I was, I knew it was going to be him or Judd and I was trying yeah. to figure out, but yeah, yeah. And I was like, is this like a Scott Pollard? I was thinking thing? Scott Pollard as well. Cause as I remember he name. also was one that like helped poke the idol out of the tree in co wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Yes. So Gary. Hogan. All right. So Mike, you are leading four to two. Mm. So Jordan, I think you technically are mathematically eliminated, but I have one more. Hey. If there's anything I'm known for, it's continuing games past the time where it's already decided. So yes. I think okay. we, can, well, we can play this well, last one out. I spent effort writing these. Okay. I'm I like going to you by the effort. You just said I spent effort. <laughs> I did a thing. I know it's chuggy, but I did a thing and I am still going to read it. Okay. Here's your last misconnection. Wait, talking about chuggy and I did a thing. I think that would be a great <laughs> pillow. If you make a pillow, you like knit a pillow. I did a thing and the thing is the pillow. That would be a great, I think I would put that on my couch. Actually, I wouldn't. I would never get like a, a, a written pillow in my house. <laughs> I can see it being a thing, though. I like did. I did a thing on your with furniture? like an arrow pointing to itself. <laughs> Wait, I did a thing, but like like a curved arrow, like pointing back on. I like guess, a or maybe it's symbol? just a pic- maybe it's just a picture of the pillow. There's like a mini pillow on the pillow that says "I did a thing" and an arrow pointing to that pillow. <laughs> okay, so you want to do. I'm not saying I want to do it. I don't want to do a thing. Of putting the pillow on the pillow and saying, I did a thing. I did a thing. Yeah. I did a thing. Okay. Well, let's move on from that and never acknowledge All it right. again. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Jordan eventually opens his Etsy store. I'm sure <laughs> yeah. that'll be the first thing on there. I can't wait. All right. Well, let's see if you can get one of the quotes from this next uh, misconnections ad and put All that right. on a pillow, Jordan. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for a woman with long brown hair. I first saw her in the parking lot of a red lobster. I think she protect was wearing... your balls. <laughs> yeah, that is Debbie. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's right. I'm going to read the rest of it just because I wrote it. I think you were wearing a giant tiger on your T-shirt. <laughs> I remember how clearly you were yelling at an older gentleman. Something about how you needed to move with purpose and you needed to do it now. <laughs> I would lay down for you like a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to remember the tiger thing. Did she wear some? Oh, she wore the tiger the bathing suit. The tiger bathing suit. Yeah, yeah, the like, I think that was... That wasn't on Co Wrong. I think that was on. Um... No, I think it was on Co Wrong. Was it? Maybe. Okay, yeah, maybe. I don't know. Cause I, but cause I... I do feel like that was the big thing to talk about preseason. Was like Debbie's Swim tiger suit. bathing suit. Is that wild that that was ten seasons ago? That was ten seasons ago. Yeah. Oh, God, <laughs> it doesn't feel like ten seasons ago. <laughs> yeah, I refuse I, I, to I acknowledge didn't, that. I didn't know they had misconnections on Telegram. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, congratulations, Mike. You are the winner of the Survivor Misconnections game. Jordan, you did a great job. Thank and uh, I think overall, I think we found our connection. Good. Do you get uh, it? That was that was the whole the, that was the whole point of the game is finding finding that connection. That's right. When two become one, <laughs> it would be like like uh Simon without your Garfunkel, Hansen without the other two Hansons, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> Which Hansen is the preferable Hansen? Um, I don't know. There's the three, right? Because they were just on the Mass Singer a few mm-hmm. seasons ago. There's, there's like the youngest Hanson, and then there's like the two older Hansons. I think the youngest one is probably Taylor Hanson. How do you know their names? I know there's Taylor, there's Zach, and there's <laughs> I don't know Chunky. I don't know what <laughs> Chunky Hanson. Chunky <laughs> <laughs> Hanson. <laughs> I don't know if there's a Chunky Hansen. Yeah, it's like seeing Chunky Hansen without the other two Hansons whose names we know. Well, Chunky's going to really break break big. Yeah, they're yeah, like, whatever. listen, the Chunkmeister goes alone. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, okay. Like, like Zach with Marianne, like seeing Hootie without the blowfish, like it's all of those things combined. So I think mm. that really we were able to put two and two together and uh, just, you know, make the world a little less lonely. <laughs> Well, let, when it comes to music, let me um, talk about something that came our way. Very, very fun here. So uh, last week, in our in our various ramblings about just complete nonsense, uh, Mary Kwiatkowski had put out the phrase, put on my Roxroy Rock drawers. <laughs> and I had sort of like parlayed that into the first phrase of walking in Memphis. <laughs> and I- Did you get a, put, you got wand offs? What? I may have one. Uh, so I'll, I, I, put that I hope, there. yeah. Uh, let me just interrupt you for, for a second. I think we're really going to enjoy this, but Liana does get uh, two more points. It would be like seeing Hootie without the blowfish. Oh, nice. <laughs> Good job, Liana. Good job, Liana. Uh, so Liana, you are, you now actually do have a, uh, it was a five to one. Yep. Five to one lead. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hootie. Hootie. And, and that was, uh, that was uh, submitted by Rob Sesternino. That, that, Wait, that what? <laughs> yes, that what? was a Rob Sesternino quote. It would be like saying Hootie without the blowfish. <laughs> Rob Sesternino original. What an yes. honor. <laughs> All right. Well, no Hootie in the blowfish here, but I did get a song submission from the great Josiah this week that somehow I put this request out there in the universe thinking this call would be unanswered, right? This misconnection, mm -hmm. thinking about writing a parody song did not happen. At the clearance of, of the great Josh Wiggler, I have gotten permission to play, and Josiah himself, I've gotten permission to play this song. So here we go. This is Josiah presenting a lovely song he likes to call Working in Fiji. Pull on my rocks, Roy drawers, and I started the game. Drag keys in the sand next to Jeffrey Probst. And you better not doubt me again. Gotta build a shelter. Now you all listen to me. Yeah, time to get crack a lacking. But are your shoes clean as can be? Then I'm working in Fiji. They're talking Harry Potter, man, what's the deal? Working in Fiji. And now I'm herding cats. That's how I feel. There yes! we go. Yes. Oh my God. That's so good. That's exactly what I envisioned when I was yeah. thinking or heard visioned when I was thinking about it. Like that <laughs> totally makes sense. Oh my I, gosh. It fits. It's so good. Listening to the BNB last week. I'm not surprised that you, that you got a submission, Mike. I had a feeling <laughs> that we were going to end up hearing this at some point. Listen, uh, I, 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 I love how dedicated the survivor fan base is. I never know when I put something out there, what might be answered. I mean, between Sean Yannell creating the survivor guy image last season. Now this, like I, my cup is full at this point and I'm drinking it in. <laughs> mm. and, and I, I I think I think it's been it's been too long since I've heard a Survivor song parody. So it's it's great having that that fix again. Uh, and I uh, hope hoping we hear some more. I I love to. Mm -hmm. I will say we did not see a lot of Roxroy this week, no. but there were a couple of fun things. Did you all watch the uh, the secret scene where Swathi talks about her music? No. No. Okay, so this is really fun. Maybe we'll talk about this next week with uh, next week's guest. Spoiler alert for what might be coming in a little bit. But essentially, like, first of all, there's a really fun scene where Swathi is trying to crack open a coconut using the blunt side of the machete. Mm -hmm. And Roxroy just, like, straight up Jim Halperts and looks into the camera about, like, can you believe this ish? Uh, but then there's this entire conversation about, like, you know, they say, oh, you're working. And, and, and Roxroy goes, oh, yeah, like, Missy Elliott. And Swathi goes, who's that? And he just <gasps> wow. flips. Like he's asking, do and you know did he also reverse it? Yeah, I mean, he he nearly did. Uh, he asked about like, do you know Aerosmith? Uh, do you know Cher? Do you know Luther Vandross? Like, it just becomes an entire interrogation as to Swathi's musical taste. Spoiler alert: she really doesn't. Uh, she knows she's heard of Cher, does not know if she is a singer or a model. Uh, when asked about boy brands, she says, "My mom listened to the Backstreet Boys," ah! and Romeo is taken out. He wow. like his his soul nearly leaves his body and leaves the islands <laughs> of crazy. Fiji when he hears that. So 
between that and like Roxroy's balls being protected, uh, that's he did not get any content this week, but I just thought that was a very fun moment in addition to the song. Mm-hmm. I, I will say I've been very impressed with uh, Swathi on the season. I actually in the preseason as well, I made her my my winner pick. Uh, and uh, this is you know one of the one of the concerns I had is the fact that she's 19. But I was like, when I heard her speak, when I heard actually it was her interview with you, Mike. I heard her uh, speak like instead of just reading the uh, you know her her bio, I was like, she does not come off like a 19 year old at all. But obviously in that moment, not not knowing who any of these people are. Uh, she, she, I guess, is showing her age there, but I'm still very impressed with the game she's playing. I think she and Roxroy have a good bond, and I think she's in like no trouble, uh, in no danger of going home if, if that tribe loses. I kind of think that she's sort of the uh, the glue of that tribe. Speaking of music, I love the fact that last week we got the Ika tribe singing the Survivor mm-hmm. theme song, and then mm-hmm. this week we got Marianne singing oh. the Survivor theme song. So I'm yes. just like really hoping that we get it from I don't know, maybe like Lydia. I don't know who's the other like young person that could sing yeah. the Survivor theme song. Mm-hmm. And we and listen, we're all millennials, right? We really appreciated Marianne's shout out of doing the whole Disney Channel logo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was really funny too because it was clearly like she was obviously doing it, but then at the same time, like not no cop trying to not have any copyright infringement. She was doing mm-hmm. it. She's like on CBS, <laughs> sort of like arm wavy, close shot, like to not get the. Uh, that, can, can I also- that scene was it was amazing, and like I love when she's like wielding the machete and like smacking the bamboo. It, it, it's it's like it felt like a Tarantino movie. They just have like the uh, like the spaghetti western music going on in the background. Uh, mm-hmm. That was that was a, a great scene. I actually that I, that scene I think that had been released before the uh, the episode came out i kind of remember seeing it on on youtube or something uh but yeah that 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 was uh i I really like what they're doing with the editing this season um and and, you know i think i think last season a lot of the editing things that we got were like the flashbacks and they were more game related they seem to be more character related here so maybe it just goes with that theme of this being more about uh the people and not so much the twist which even though i like i do like when they go back in time and, and do like the genius style reveals i will also say i think actually a lot of people were saying again like this was so much better than Survivor 41. I think, honestly, what it comes down to, I and I didn't even realize this until I really thought about it, there was no Shipwheel Island yes, this episode. That was big. Yep. And episode two, uh, Shipwheel Island happened in the first three episodes of Survivor 41, in a manner of speaking. And so maybe this is another thing as well that production was like, okay, maybe we could parse these out a little bit more than maybe they do it every other round or something. I think that was a very good choice. Maybe not so great of a choice. Like, let me also put this out here as we're starting to, to close things down. I Is it time to end the blindfold challenge? I felt so bad for these contestants, like really wanging into stuff the entire time out there. I think there's a way to do a blindfold because you always get good moments from the blindfold challenge and it's sort of become a staple of survivor. doesn't necessarily mean that it, that something needs to always stay in the game. Once it's in the game, there are things that should probably not be in the game that are, that are, that have been there for a long time. But I do think there's a way to maybe make it a little bit safer for the contestants without having so many obstacles. And in this one, like, Usually in the blindfold challenges, they have to retrieve stuff and come back. This time they were like operating machinery, uh, which is not great to do when you can't when you can't see. You have to like pull the rope, you have to twist the thing. Like they, they really uh, upped the notch on, on the blindfold challenge. I don't know if that was necessary, and I think maybe that created more obstacles in the middle that Roxroy could could ram his uh, his uh, little Rock, Rock, Rock Roxroy's into, into. Yeah, one's named Rox and run his name Roy. Rox and Roy. Yeah, um, that. that it could potentially um, be a problem uh, for, for the contestants, but I don't know if we have to get rid of it. Maybe just make it a little bit safer. If, if I'm like survivor gym teacher out there, am I playing this with my, with my students now? Yeah. I, so I have multiple perspectives on this. So one is the, obviously unnecessary injury in survivor is not fun, especially when you have people who are already and not getting rice, they're out there not, you know, their flint is being taken away. So there's already a lot of stressors on their body where another injury that is sort of outside of the game itself, just simply due to a challenge is not fun. That being said, I still laugh like a child when Rock's Roy hits his ball slam. I'm like, ha! Ah. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> it's so tough. Well, between that and like Marianne walking into a pole, I mean, like you said, Leon, I think it comes down to like, injuries proper uh maybe it's just yeah. we, we've been so focused on like the well-being of contestants themselves and you never know like the most incidental injuries like when i was little i had my my hand slammed into a car door by my family friend and like i still vividly remember it and like i feel it still when it rains outside so like i can't even think about whenever 
you know, uh, something like you wang your knee on the, or balls in the, in Rox Roy's case. And like, when it rains outside, is he going to feel it in Rox and Roy, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, that's, that sounds really painful. And, and Mike, I, I feel really bad for you. I, I could sort of relate because I had some injuries as a kid, but uh, Liana, I, I think that you should be feeling some pain right now because Mike's phrase was when I was little, I had a car door yeah. slammed out of my hand. And I still remember it quite vividly. Mike gets two points. Uh, good job. It is, it is a five to three game. God, no, and I, was good. Listen, there was a it's lot. Not, there it's that not was untrue. Sus. It's not untrue that uh, I did get my hand slammed into a car door. So oh wow! As if well, that's really working out there. I feel like I remember you telling that story before, so I wouldn't want to be like, "Hi, your trauma is fake. <laughs> that's fake." Big, 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 exactly. Big. Oh, Jordan, you should have made it all personal stories, so Liana can't like yeah, call out right. my stories. As exactly. <laughs> when I was a child, blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, okay, I, I did get my hand. This is and this is real. I don't have phrases that I have to put in. I did get my my hand caught in an elevator when I was like. I think I was like one or two or something. Um, and uh, it, it, I don't remember. I was too young to remember it, but apparently like flattened my hand like a pancake basically. But you're at the point where like your bones haven't fully developed yet. So it's sort of just, I mean, I, I'm sure I had to go to the, the hospital obviously, but it, it healed fine. Uh, it didn't cause any lasting damage, which is, which is good. So um, was it my, like you stuck your hand in the door or like, I think like, oh, so the, what happens. the, so there, there was a, uh, there was a lawsuit involved. <laughs> the, uh, we, we sued. Well, I didn't sue. I was a baby. My dad's a personal injury lawyer. He was my lawyer. And I was a little baby. Um, the sensor was broken on the elevator. The, th the sensor that's supposed to open the door if there's like an obstruction. And it was broken. And I think they didn't like do the, the what they were supposed to do with like the inspection or something. So my, my dad sued the, the elevator company. And apparently it paid for my first year of college. <laughs> oh, look at you. Yeah. He was probably like, yeah, stick your hand in there. <laughs> like, oh, and, I, and I was a baby. I was like, yeah, yeah, money dad, got... uh, yeah, dad, thanks, thanks for representing me in court, daddy. <laughs> My elevator hand money got me through freshman year. This bruise yeah. for you, elevator. Yes. Uh, so the... all, all, all of you with, with, uh, with little kids, you know, if you want to pay for the first year of college, Shove maybe, Asher maybe... In a well right. or something. Well, yeah. <laughs> yep. Well, let me go to that wishing well that Mike went yeah. to. I'm near Hoboken, <laughs> yeah. so let me just push him in there. Um, okay, so the la the last thing I want to say about the the challenge is that I think fundamentally what the challenge, the blindfold challenge tests is something that I want to see the tribes tasked with, right? Which is essentially teamwork, communication, and being able to, it's not about physical strength, right? It really is about team cohesion and how well you can work together and how well you can have one leader direct the tribe. So seeing someone like Lydia, for example, like come in and just boss that out, like that's a role that we may never yeah. see her have in any other challenge. And so I thought that that was really cool to see. And I really like it when players are able to show off another side of themselves to give them even more dimension as players. So uh, like I said, fundamentally, I think what the challenge tests is really fun. So if we do want to decrease the amount of injuries, yeah, maybe we, it's like baby proofing, you know, you, you yep. pad all of the obstacles, you give them helmets. I don't That's know, something like that. Yeah. As long um, as you don't give them any elevators, I think they'll be okay. Uh -huh. Exactly. So I still want to see that tested, which is why I'm not ready to give it up. If I have to give up the America's funniest home video, version of it all where nobody's getting smacked in the balls fine but i don't want to give up the being tested on that skill set have, have you green, ever orange and blue all the funner things taku <laughs> have, have you have you ever seen the documentary class action park yeah that's about the like the i forget the name of it's it's a park in the action, uh, action park like it's action park it's a, yeah, it's a so action park, park in the tri in the tri-state area that yes. is just known for being i know because i watched a funk land which is like a theme park youtube channel and like it is like it was causing whiplash and massive mm -hmm. injuries with all of its well, rides. Guess guess who went there many times as a, as a kid? Did your dad <laughs> sue them also? <laughs> my dad didn't sue them. I never got. I think, I think your dad was just didn't. looking for the next payout of like, yes, but, all right, this kid's really paying gotta off. Pay for his it's, second year of college. <laughs> it still exists, by the way. This 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 water park still exists. I've been there recently, and what they do now is on like the, they have a ride called the Colorado River Rapids, which is a like big like you go to float with like I think it's it's like up to five or six people or something. But now they make you wear helmets on on the, the ride and like people were oh. smashing their heads together when i was a kid like there were definitely multiple concussions like we used to go with with the uh, sleepaway camp because it was very close to my camp and like we would still go to the same there, there was like there were like deaths in the summer like people died at the park and oh we would still go and we, we just weren't allowed to go on the ride that the person died on like it, it's a really very dangerous park but a lot 
fun fun water water slides like it, it was death a good this, park death in the summer sounds like one of those like hercule poirot movies that's that's coming out soon uh we should also do you think jeff probst never don't go to action park because that's going to make things incredibly scary for when he comes back to survivor of like wait a minute that's the danger that we need that's the monster <laughs> this is the monster yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> the monster's class is action park well jordan you may have have earned your Bobo Bucks in a lawsuit. But now it's time to give back. Of course, at the end yes. of every episode of the BNB, we ask our guests to present a charity or cause that you would like to highlight looking outside of our little world of Survivor. Uh, I know you came in last week with a with a cause to highlight. Are you gonna do the same or are you gonna highlight something different here? Yes. Let me let me just uh I clicked out of it. Um let me just go back to it here. <gasps> All right. In the meantime, wait, wait, uh, so get... wait, Mike, I have, I have a question. The it's the, the guy who set up the Ukraine charity, the, the, we, we could cut this out. The guy who set up the uh, Ukraine charity uh, of like giving like prepaid meals. Is that the one that you pitched on like the, the opening of uh, the B&B? Because that's the one yeah, I found so also. And then I realized, uh, wait a world, second, I've heard this before. World, world Central Kitchen with Jose Andres. Yes. Was that the same one? That's the same one. Yeah. Okay. So I thought I, I was like, I thought I thought of this, not thought of it. Like he, Jose Andres obviously thought of it, but I thought I was like the first one to, to like, I, I didn't remember hearing you say it. And then I was looking at the diary. He's like, wait a second. Mike's talked about this before. So I don't have, that's the one I had. Um, and, and I realized that it was not the, uh, you can plug it, it, it again. It, it, There's still an ongoing no, crisis, so like it no, it's, it's valid. Yeah. No, they got their meals from Mike already. I want to do something else. Um, <laughs> should I just do UNICEF? You can do UNICEF. UNICEF's good. Uh, let me just go make sure I have their website up. Okay. Here we go. No one's ever heard of UNICEF before. Okay. It's good. Okay. Unique. Okay, there we go. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, yeah, I could. I could yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, my my charity. So in in the past, yes, I, I have uh, uh, I have uh, talked about uh, uh, Calvary Hospital. Uh, I have uh, uh, talked about uh, other uh, 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 Memorial Sloan, Sloan Kettering. This time, I'm going to go in another direction. I am going to. Uh, I'm sure it's a, it's a charity that you uh, all probably have either heard of or know about uh, UNICEF. UNICEF is a great organization and currently they are helping uh, children and refugees in general on the ground in Ukraine and also as they have gone into other countries uh, it, uh, surrounding Ukraine. Uh, obviously, they need a lot of uh, support and help right now. Uh, so I think UNICEF is a good charity to, uh, to, to always give to, but especially when uh, there's a world crisis like this right now. Yes, yeah, so it's just unicef.org, U-N-I-C-E-F. Yes, support those in Ukraine and those around the world as well. And Jordan, we're so happy that when you always come on and support us, this has been a great, uh, you know, back-to-back -back season thing to do between your phrases, between probably one of the most out there games I've ever experienced of Savai or Savai Chet. Or Chet. <laughs> I am just delighted every time we get to, to have you and your seeds and your ball mongering in our presence. <laughs> Yeah, my my, my seeds and ball mongering will will always be available uh, to to the BNB, and I, <laughs> I I love coming on this podcast. It's always it's always a lot of fun. Get to be a little bit wacky, um, like I'm like I'm normally not totally wacky, but it's, yeah, just it's, a, it's been a good time. Well, if people want to whack out with you. Uh, what? <laughs> Again, not a phrase. Ball monger with you. Uh, how can people follow you on social media, and and what do you have going on, uh, whether in podcasts or other content creation, as it were? So if you uh, if you want to follow me on social media at Jordan Kalish on Twitter, that's usually where I'm talking about Survivor. I'll, I'll sometimes use Instagram as as well. Uh, it's, it's Jordan Kalish on on Instagram. Yeah. I'm well. You do you want to highlight the the thing that you did on the RHAP Instagram this past week? Yeah. So uh, dur during this season, uh, the RHAP Grams account, which which is a much uh, more active Instagram account than than I have, uh, had I uh, did post a video of me asking trivia questions about the most recent. Uh, episode of Survivor. So I was talking last week, I was talking about the premiere, uh, I believe to, today or tomorrow or uh, sometime during the weekend or maybe Monday, there will be a video posted of me asking three more questions about episode two uh, of uh, Survivor 42. Um, there might be some quotes. I don't know if they're going to be any Chet Welch quotes. There probably shouldn't be because he's not on the season. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, you, you can go you can go on TikTok or you could go on Instagram and you could hear me uh, ask you some questions uh, and uh, try, try to answer them. We'll see how closely you're watching the show 
Are you are you sitting down? Are you watching the episode more than once? Or are you like doing dishes or doing house house chores uh, while the episode's on? We want you to be paying attention. You need to be watching the show. Uh, and <laughs> and uh, this this these this will test your knowledge of Survivor 42. Taskmaster Jordan. Yes. You will watch this episode. You will watch this episode. Are you kidding me? You're you're gonna you're gonna get up and go and go to the bathroom and not hit pause in the middle of, of this challenge? What, what's wrong with you? How dare you? All right. Well, I uh will not be forcing you to watch the episode, uh, but you can follow me on Twitter <laughs> at Liana R H A P. Watch uh, Survivor, also, it's a good show. We like it. I think you're talking to people who are like already into several hours of That's Survivor. That's true. The B the B podcast, B audience is probably okay. not like the cat casual yeah. fan base who might miss an episode or, or, I mean, or considering like the amount of times that we poke fun at them during one recurring segment i would imagine not a lot of casual fans are listening to this you don't get a lot of angry emails or like i i think it would be like faxes from any of these people uh who are in casuals corner i didn't yeah, like well, what you said about me on the bnb <laughs> no it's, it's <laughs> telegrams from back comment. in survivor co wrong right they're tapping it out yeah. Uh, but uh, yes, so talking about not Survivor, uh, podcasting about The Masked Singer, which had its second episode this past week, and also RuPaul's Drag Race season 14. We're talking about the lip sync Lollapurooza smackdown thing that happened. So definitely you want to check that out. Awesome. And you can follow me at a Mike Bloom type. As I mentioned before, my interview with Mariah is up at parade.com. Really great. Again, this cast is really great in general, but I think Mariah had uh, some very grounded responses to both like her own gameplay, the Taku tribe di dynamics, as well as what she took away. Uh, I'll give a little BuzzFeed esque Ooh. tease here that, you know, the main thing she took away from the show might surprise you because it was from Marianne, the very person that she was going after. So you can check that out in addition to uh, lost coverage, of course, on post show recaps. I just finished doing seven days straight of upload coverage with Jess Sterling. We're going to be doing a wrap-up podcast this next week, but uh, that is happening as well, and maybe some other reality TV stuff going on, too. Of course, next week, we'll be back with the B&B, &B, and maybe this person will be able to respond with, is it normal to have 19-year-olds not know who Missy Elliott is? Because he is someone who is both an apparent expert on music as well as, you know, the parent of at least one teenager, very happy to be welcoming back Akiva Winokur. Wheels Winokur himself is going to be making his return to the B&B &B to talk about episode three. Uh, looks like we might be talking about drowning or something along the lines happening. The danger is real. And no matter what happens, uh, we're going to find ourselves on dry land talking to Akiva next week. That being said, if you all have any game ideas that you want to put out there, we are receiving of absolutely all of them. Uh, much like Mike, I think some of them we're going to sort of like bury for a little bit and we will return to them. We're not like Mike and we're just going to lose track of them. Uh, we want to, we're, we're going to address them later on in the season, especially if there are some weeks where things are maybe a bit slower. So please send them in when you have the ideas. R-H-A-P-B-N-B -B at gmail.com. The letter B, the letter N, the letter B. Or you can tweet them to us using hashtag R-H-A-P-B-N-B. -B. We are super grateful to everyone and anyone listening to this podcast, especially people like Josiah who are somehow inspired to create song parodies. That was absolutely incredible. Uh, speaking of music, special thanks to Will from America for his fantastic theme song for the b, &B and Scott St. Pierre for editing everything behind the scenes. We'll be back next week with... Akiva Winokur. Oh, by the way, Liana, what was your fourth phrase, by the way? Oh, my fourth phrase was, I was fishing for compliments and accidentally caught a trout. <laughs> I had no <laughs> idea. Nice. Uh, that was uh, mine, mine was, I may struggle with geography, but I'm sure I'm somewhere around here. Which that's, the, that's pretty good. I pretty think good. that was that was when that was the first quote that I I put on my list of potential quotes. I think that was one of my favorite ones. I think it's it's just uh it's well worded. Good job to the uh, the phrase generator for coming up with that one. Uh yeah. Um, I may struggle with geography, but I'm sure I'm somewhere around here. Kind of from it's kind of like the the sequel to uh you, your calculator history being more more embarrassing than your browsing history. It's not just math that you struggle with, Mike. It's geography, according to <laughs> to the phrase. No, it's it's slowly revealed that I'm just a, a school drunk drop out and i've just sat behind <laughs> this microphone yeah I have nothing else to do. <laughs> you're next you're not supposed to be like science what is that <laughs> well listen i may not know much geography but i'm somewhere around here and i will be here next week alongside liana and akiva winnaker talking about episode three of survivor 42 thank you all so much for listening we'll check you out at your next day